This episode of Real Engineering is brought to you by the Curiosity Stream and Nebula Bundle Deal. Sign up now to watch the hour long version of this video linked in the description. Jet engines are a marvel of engineering. From precisely controlling the internal atomic structure of metals to create turbine blades that are actually one single crystal, to delicate robotic machining that humans could only have dreamed of a decade ago. The jet engines of today are barely recognizable to those of the 1940s. They're bigger, they're more powerful, and they're more efficient. The Dreamliner's engines are so big that they are the same diameter as the 737 fuselage. And this is just part of the puzzle that has allowed the 787 Dreamliner to break world records. In March 2020, in the midst of a global pandemic, the US government imposed travel restrictions on all European travelers a move that cut off France from one of its far-flung territories in French Polynesia. Business as usual for Air Tahiti was no more. A creative solution had to be found to replace their regular flights between Tahiti International Airport and Charles de Gaulle Airport, which, under normal circumstances, stopped over in LAX. Faced with disruption, Air Tahiti began operating the world's longest flight a 16 and a half hour, 15,700 kilometer non-stop flight between Tahiti and Paris, the world's longest distance scheduled flight, and it was technically a domestic flight. The 787 made that possible, and today we are going to learn how. In our last video, we explored the incredible engineering that has gone into sculpting the airframe of the 787, but all of that work is useless without a power system to match. Boeing transformed the way airliners are powered to create a plane like no other. The first step in powering a large plane is to get the jet engine started, and that itself is a very power-hungry process. We need to get the compressor section turning in order to achieve adequate compression for engine ignition. We have all seen footage of people hand-cranking old piston-powered planes to get them started, this obviously is not feasible for jet engines, which need to rotate at very high speeds to start. Engineers have dreamed up many ways to complete this job. Some engines use explosive cartridges that look like shotgun shells that will be fired by an electric charge. The hot gas is expelled by the cartridge, then drive a smaller turbine, which is connected to the drive shaft through a reduction gear, allowing the smaller turbine to get the engines up to speed. Cartridge starters were popular in older military planes that may need to get into the air on very short notice with limited ground support. Some planes, like the SR-71, had a direct drive starting cart, which connected two massive V-8 engines directly to the J-58 engine from underneath the nacelle to get the powerful jet engines up to 4,500 RPM. However, air starting is by far the most common method where pressurized air is fed into the turbine section directly to get the engine moving. This can be done with an external cart called a hover cart, which connects hoses to the engine. But most commercial airliners are capable of generating their own pressurized air with an APU, or auxiliary power unit. These are smaller turbine engines located at the tail of the aircraft that are small enough to get started with a battery and an electric motor. Most people aren't even aware this mini turbine engine exists, but you can see the exhaust here on all modern commercial airliners. The 787's APU, like other planes, is started by a small battery. But from here, the 787's system architecture is very different. The 787's APU, like other planes, is started by a small battery. But from here, the 787's system architecture is very different. The 787's APU does not provide pressurized air to the engines. It provides electric current to two electric motors attached to each engine, which act like the starter motors on your car. However, these motors can act as generators to provide the 787 with unparalleled electric power. A traditional plane has one generator on each engine and one on the APU, but the 787 is anything but traditional. There are, in total, six generators on board, with two pairs on each engine, providing the main power, 
each capable of generating 250 kilowatts, with two more on the APU providing secondary power, each capable of providing 225 kilowatts. If all six of these generators were running at the same time, that would be 1.45 megawatts of power available to the 787, four times more than a 777 is capable of producing. To put that into perspective, this is a 787 on a football field. If we needed to generate that electricity with solar panels in the middle of the day, we would need to cover about 10 football fields with solar panels. This is a lot of power. So why did the 787 need that much power and where is it all going? The 787 uses a no bleed air architecture. Traditionally, many aircraft systems are powered by hot compressed air drawn from the compressor section of the jet engine. The APU normally provides hot air to the engines to get them started. And then once the main engines are started, hot compressed air bled from the compressor section drives several important systems. Normally, air conditioning and cabin pressurization is handled by the bleed air system. The bleed air would be drawn from the engine at a temperature upwards of 230 degrees Celsius. This obviously would quickly turn the cabin into an oven, so the air would first run through a complicated air conditioning and pressurization system, where some of the air is cooled using a heat exchanger, which uses outside air from a surface mounted intake called ram intakes to remove heat from the engine bleed air until it is a suitable temperature to be distributed through the cabin. So we are doing work to remove energy from this valuable bleed air from the engine. This is obviously rather inefficient and all that ducting is heavy. And this is why the 787 does not use the system. Its cabin pressurization is handled entirely electrically. We now have two inlets, the ram air inlet and the cabin air compressor inlet. The cabin air compressor leads to, you guessed it, the cabin air compressor, an electrically driven device that compresses the air for the passenger cabin. This compression process heats the air up too much for direct use into the cabin, so it does require some cooling using a heat exchanger cooled by the ram air inlet. You can see this little door open while the plane is on the ground and it serves to protect the inlet from foreign objects entering it. Another energy intensive process that has been handed over to the electric motors is the braking system. As you can imagine, the energy required to slow down a 200 ton plane traveling at 270 kilometers per hour is not small. Calculating the energy required is pretty trivial. We just need to calculate the kinetic energy of the object, which we can do with this equation. And that gives us a kinetic energy of 562 million joules. That's a lot of energy. And the vast majority of that energy needs to be dissipated by the brakes of the plane. Reverse thrusters can deploy that redirect air from the bypass ducts through slots that open on the side of the engine. So the brakes need to convert a lot of kinetic energy into another form of energy, heat energy. You can really see this in effect during a plane's most extreme brake test, an aborted landing test. Here, the plane is flying at full load, including the weight of the fuel, and has to abort at its V1 speed, the absolute maximum speed a plane can abort a landing at. Beyond that point, the plane has to take off. When the plane comes to a full stop, the brakes are glowing red hot. Typically, the braking mechanisms of planes is driven by hydraulics, with a hydraulic piston forcing the brake pads against the wheel to slow down the plane. The 787 removed this bulky hydraulic system and traded it in for brakes actuated by electric motors. Each of the eight landing gear wheels feature one of these units, and together they helped eliminate between 62 to 111 kilograms of weight from the 787, while also being drastically easy.